you need to get your Godhead correct because this group obviously doesn't believe in the Godhead, meaning yes. Father, Son, Spirit. So can you, yeah, can we, can we go down the, the Trinitarian yeah. belief, if yeah. you don't mind? Uh, you, we, obviously, the Father is not the Son, right? I'm not gonna. I have. A, I'm not gonna answer any questions because I don't want to. No, I mean, like obviously, if he's the Son, he's the Son of the Father. The Father is not Jesus, but the Father of Jesus, right? The Father of Jesus can't be Jesus. Am I my own Father? No, you cannot. Okay, so the Father of Jesus, we know he's God. <sighs> so already we can see we're right back to the kitchen streaming, guys. Kitchen streamer, classic. Kitchen streamer, Bruce Lee broke T-shirt. After a 30-year career, he's still grinding in his like bootlegged welfare kitchen, collecting welfare checks. Subsidized housing, guys. Welcome to Sam Shimon. This is what I try to tell all you guys. Um, another day of exposing Sam Shimon. And he's just start talking about the Trinity, which is a Roman invention. Let's go. Father Jesus is not Jesus. So who is Jesus? He's the son who's one with the father in nature. Are you with me now? Let me show you where Jesus is okay. identified. See, this is the beautiful part. He's one in the father in nature. Okay. Matthew 24, 36. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The Son does not know, the Holy Spirit does not know, but only the Father. How interesting. As now, I don't know how you say it in your cult group, you say Yahuwah or Yahuwah Shaha. So when I, when I look back in the Hebrew, it's yod heh vah So how do you guys pronounce it, your group? I just pronounce it yod heh or Yav. Okay, Yav, all right. Now, I want you to go to Psalm 102, open it up for me. Read verse 1. Who's this? This is a prayer to whom? Hear my, O oh Lord. So that's yod heh vav heh or yod heh wav heh. So who's he praying to? Hear my prayer to yod heh vav heh. Okay, now read it. Just read it in English. Read the entire verse. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord, and let my uh, cry come unto you. Good. Now read verse 12. So you, O oh Lord, shall endure forever in the remembrance of your name to all nations, to all generations. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So notice he's praying to yod heh wav heh. You, O oh Lord, you, Yahuwah, are forever, right? Yeah, you shall endure forever. Okay, now read what he says about the true God. Psalm 102, verses 25 to 27. For old you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will endure. Yes, they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will change them, and they will be changed. So wait, this is a description of who? God. And what does he say about the true God? Who laid the foundation of the earth? God. And the true God, right? yod heh yeah. wow right? Yeah. And the heavens are the work of his hands, right? Correct. And this God, Yahweh, is unchangeable because he'll roll up creation. Creation is changing, but he remains the same, right? Uh, correct. Um, yeah. You see it, right? Yeah. So this cannot be said of a creature because if you're part of creation, you're being changed. And God is rolling you up like a garment. Only God is the same and his years never end, right? Yeah. And it says you will change them. Yes. Correct. God will change them and he'll roll them up like a garment. But he will remain the same and his years never end, right? Yeah. And only the mighty God, who's almighty, laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with his own hands, right? Correct. Exactly. One God. But Hebrews chapter 1, read verses 8 to 12. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Pause. The, but the Son, he says, who's the he? Who's speaking to the Son and about the Son? You see how it's contradictory? Like he contradicts himself because you can look at Revelation 22. Nine, but he said to me, you must not do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book, worship only God. This is Jesus telling one of his disciples when you started to worship him. So he contradicts himself. Look, how, look at the kitchen streamer, like a bald, ugly kitchen streamer. God. God the Father, right? Correct. Now notice what God the Father says to the Son. Keep reading. Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. But to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the scepter of the righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. And you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Now pause right there. Because Jesus became man to become the heir to David's throne, the Father becomes his God. So he's Wait, sorry, he became man to become the heir of the Father's throne. That made no sense. Therefore, God, your God, I, who became your God, have anointed you above your companions, meaning your brothers and sisters, whom you come to redeem, right? With the oil of gladness more than your companions, yes. correct. Okay, keep that in mind. So the father's talking to the son, right? Correct. Father now the, the father can... Imagine after a 30-year career to be this ugly, disgusting, in a kitchen, streaming, and having no money, and being that ugly. Like, think about that. How can this guy ever be right in anything? 
continues, the father continues to speak to the son in verses 10 to 12. Now pay attention to what the father says to the son. And you, Lord, in the beginning with the foundation of the earth and the heavens and the works of your hands, they will perish by your, by you remain and they will all grow old like a garment, quoting Psalms 102, I see. Like a cloak, you will fold them up and they will be changed. Again, quoting, okay? And you are the same and your years will not fall. Fail, sorry. Wait, so the Father wow. okay. describes Jesus as that almighty Jehovah God of Psalm 102? Huh. Yeah, he does. He quotes it exactly what it says. And he applies it to who? To the Son. How can he apply it to the Son if the Son is not almighty Yahuwah, who is without beginning, without end, uncreated and equal to the Father? He couldn't. But he did. He did because... I see. The Father and Son are one in nature, though they're not the same person. That's why I'm a Trinitarian, right? <laughs> can, can I say something? Literally yes, 20 minutes ago, I was I was crying to the Most High. So this is, is very funny to me. But If you believe in the Trinity, then how do you explain when one of Jesus' disciples was bowing down to him? Revelation 22, 9. But he said to me, don't do that. I'm a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of the scroll. Worship God. Say louder. So, I was I was literally crying to the Most High for help. So did you hear it, guys? He just said before I went live, he was crying out to God, the Most High, to show him the truth. Did you guys hear it? Say it again. Yeah. Um. Like twenty minutes ago, before I hopped on your live, I was I was crying because a lot of life hasn't been the best, and I just I don't know. It doesn't. It's not going okay. great. So thank you for this, my friend. No, no, thank, thank God, not me. I didn't know you were coming on. In fact, here, just to show you how much God loves you, how, how real Jesus is, this was an impromptu session. I planned this the last minute. I wasn't going live and on a different topic. Now you tell me- I wasn't gonna go live. It was busy, I had to go to collect his wealth for a check. God didn't hear you, how real Jesus is. Then when he saw your tears, your crying, Jesus in his love stirred up my heart to go live because he wanted me to address you because he loves you. So now let me show you who this Jesus is that heard your tears. Go to Isaiah 44, verse 6, when you get a chance. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, uh, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Now, what it means for God to be first and last, Isaiah explains it in Isaiah 41, verse 4. Who has performed and done it, calling the generation from the beginning. I am the Lord, I am the first, and I am the last. I am he. Do you understand what it means? It says, I was the one who summoned the generations. I create the generations and I summon them. So I was there with the first generation of creatures and I will be with the very last of them, right? To be the first means I was there from the beginning of creation with the first generation of creatures that I brought into being. And because I remain till the end, remember what Psalm 110 says, your years never end. Mm -hmm. I will be there with the very last generation. Correct. That is only true of God because for someone to be there from the start of creation and remain with every generation of creatures to the very last generation, he must be beginningless. He must have been there before creation began and he must remain forever for him to be there to the very end, right? Correct. You can't say this of a creature because we have a beginning and an end, right? Now go to Revelation 1, 17 to 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Well, when Amen. did your day, wow, hey, die? That wouldn't, the only person that died would be Jesus. So that means Jesus just told you, I am your day, wow, hey. But when I became a man, I died as a man, and yet still he didn't cease to exist. Right? You see that, right? I do see this, yes. Now read Revelation 2, verse 8, because we want to give you a few more nuggets. These things saying the first and the last who was dead and came to life. How can Jesus be the first and last if only Jehovah is the first and last? Because to be the first and last, you must be there from the beginning of creation. And you must remain throughout all the generations to the last generation. If Jesus is not almighty God who became flesh and as a man, he died a human death. You, you, you can't be a creature and be the first and last. And yet he is the first and last because he's no creature, even though he became man. And as a man, he experienced a human death without ceasing to exist, right? Correct. Okay, now let me give you another one. Go to Revelation 21, verses 6 to 7. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the foundation of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now you catch it. No one denies this is God Almighty, right? Because he says, I will be his God, he'll be my son, right? Correct. But who did he claim to be in verse 6? What are his titles? 
And he said, it is done. I am alpha, beginning and the end. Alpha and omega means beginning and the end. And that's simply another way of saying first and last. Alpha and omega is the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. It's like saying I'm 